Hello boys and girls and welcome to the Joy of Sticks. Stickhead here with your Atari ST gaming channel. Now let's have a look at my third favourite Atari ST game of all time. It's uh, David Braben's Frontier. And uh, no, this is the full title of which is uh, Frontier Elite 2. So it's a sequel to Elite, which is a game that I've actually not played too much. Um, I did have an Acorn Electron before I owned my Atari ST. Well, actually, before I owned the Atari ST, I had an Amstrad CPC. Then before that, I had uh, the BBC Electron. And um, so really, I was too young to appreciate Elite at that point. I do remember my dad playing it and laughing at his frustrations of trying to dock with the rotating space, space stations. But... Um, I only played it briefly myself and didn't really understand what was going on. Too young to uh, appreciate it, really. But uh, when this came out, uh, kind of towards the end of the Atari ST's life, really, um, I bought it straight away and uh, fell in love with it. And basically, it's uh, it's kind of more of the same, really. It's like Elite, but more so. Uh, and the devil's in the detail, really, with this version. It's uh, kind of everything that Elite does, but it to a higher, higher level of detail. And I'll show you the kind of things that I mean in a minute. But right now, I'm actually going to turn off all of these extra details because I'll leave the music on actually for a bit so you can hear it. Um, one of the downfalls of the, the Atari ST and the Amiga version of of this is the frame rate is is quite poor really. So I tell you what I'll do actually, I'll leave it up. Was it on high or very high? And then we'll have a little look. Uh it's not easy to see actually. But yeah, on 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 the high setting it looks lovely. You get little buildings and you know lots of detail on the planet surfaces and on the ships themselves. Um you see little things like the uh the numbers on the ship and the and the cockpit, the flashing lights and all sorts. It looks very nice, but all that detail does drop the frame rate down and it, it makes especially the combat. Uh, makes that quite painful, so I'm going to stick it on low, uh, and as I say, turn off the other, the other options. And uh, as you can see, well, I've still got flashing lights, but the the letters are indistinguishable now. Cockpits disappeared. Some of the buildings have gone. The planet doesn't look as nice. So yeah, it's not going to look as nice, but it will run smoother, and, uh, and that's more important to me, especially in the battles. Where you've got to try and track and shoot opponents, you know, you need a smooth, a smoother frame rate. Anyway, yeah, so th this is more more of a leap, but with more detail. So it gives you the same kind of freedom that Elite had, and you know, it gives you. Let's have a look here. It gives you, I mean, countless opportunities for exploration. It's all kind of procedurally generated so you know there's lots of random systems for you to go off and explore and stuff um, so really you know, you're not going to get bored there's so much there to look at and what's nice as well it, it gives you the freedom of what to do in this world so you know you could you could be a trader you know running between the systems with the goods and buying and selling to make your money or you could be a miner you know, you can skim stars for hydrogen fuel, or you can shoot asteroids and mine those, or you could carry stuff for people, or carry people themselves from system to system to earn money, or you could, you know, uh, follow the more nefarious routes, uh, become a pirate or or an assassin and things like that. So the freedom is is brilliant. That's one of the best things about the game. But obviously, you know, we've just started. We've got a very basic ship. We're going to have to build up some cash before we start thinking about blowing people out of space. So, well, God, it's been a while since I played this, but let's see. Um, 
I tell you what, we'll look at trading first because that's a good way to get started earning some money. We start off here in the Ross 154 system. So if I click down here, it tells us all about Ross 154. There's the star, Ross 154, and here are the planets Dust Ball, Asta, which is a gas giant. Uh, another rocky planetoid. Now, s orbiting around this gas giant, we've actually got um, a class M planet, meaning it's got a breathable atmosphere. So this is where we are at the moment, major starport, Sirocco station. Is there anywhere else to visit? There's no other starports here, so that's the only place you could actually land in Ross 154. Now, if I click, where is it, here? it tells you all about the trading in this system uh, so you can have a look these are the things that they need major imports fruit and veg heavy plastics hydrogen fuel uh, and minor imports and here are the things that they export now because it's an in it has a breathable atmosphere and what does it say oh, there's some more detail somewhere oh, how do I get to the more detail uh, I don't know. I'm sure that's there somewhere. Never mind. But uh, apparently there's those indigenous animals on here which you know can kill and eat. So they've got animal meat. So what we'll do, we'll go to the stock market. And because it's a, ma a major export, animal meat will be cheaper than it will elsewhere. So it, it may well be worth buying some animal meat. But first, what you need to do is check out where you're going to next. Um, I can't seem to move the map. I'm sure it was with the cursor keys. No? Why can't I do that then? Oh, I know. It's because I've set the cursor keys to be joystick input. So bear with me a second, and I will stop that from happening. Uh, here we go, turn that off. Okay, now I should be able to move. There we go. Right, so this is a fairly standard trade route up here to Barnard Star. Let's have a look, a look, a little look at Barnard Star. There you go, there's the star itself, and... There's a number of worlds here. Birmingham World has a major star for Anderton Depot, and it has an orbital station. So what we'll be doing, I mean, this one's got a smaller one, a little trading post as well. So what we'll do, we'll have a look at <coughs> their trading. And you can see here their major imports includes animal meat. So that's a prime candidate for trading between the two systems. So let's buy some animal meat. That's all our money, just well, virtually all our money, just to buy one ton. There you go. You can see down here my cargo space is I've got two remaining and two used. Now two used because I've just bought the animal meat, and I've also been given by the, at the start of the game. I think it's my uncle bequeathed me the ship with a ton of hydrogen fuel. There you go. So we won't uh, run out of fuel halfway to Boston base so there we go so now this green disc here means we've targeted Barnard Star so we're ready to go now you can't just launch wait well, actually you can just launch but local police won't take too kindly we need to ask for permission first so let's do that and then we'll launch there we go and up we go now will not shift shift is backwards <laughs> don't want to crash into the planet from the off so yeah, return key there fires my boosters, and up we go. Let's have a little look behind us. You can see uh, the base disappearing as we go. What was that called again? Can't remember. Let's have a look. Actually, we can click this, and there it is Sirocco Station. Cool. It's kind of blurred by the uh, serial number of another ship that's docked there at the moment. There we go. Okay, as soon as we're out of the atmosphere, which we are currently. Uh, should have lifted those the gear the landing gear up there we go we can teleport not teleport what we're we saying hyperspace 
to Barnard Star. And you can see, look, we are in the Barnard Star system. So, um, what do we need to do next? We can look at the system map, which is here, uh, and we can zoom in. Uh, we want uh, Anderton Depot, which was orbiting Birmingham World. So let's zoom in. Oh no, Boston base, I do apologise. There it is, in all of its glory. So Boston base. Now this here is the autopilot, so we'll target the autopilot at Boston base. And we'll click the autopilot on and off we go. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off the music. It might, might save us a little bit of extra processing power. You never know. Make things a bit smoother. Uh, so yeah, one of, one of the things that uh, is nice that Elite 2 introduced over Elite was real, more realistic physics. So um, there's Newtonian physics in the game. So if you thrust in a direction, you travel in that direction until you thrust in the opposite direction, um, which is quite cool. But obviously, it would take a long, long time to actually travel because uh, I don't know. We can't see ourselves on this on this current map, but uh, it would basically take us days to reach the station. But there are these Star Dreamer controls down here, so you can speed up time. Uh, and you don't have to sit around and wait. Now, if you were to encounter another ship uh, that was, say, a pirate attacking you, uh, you do come out of Star Dreamer, and um, and then obviously you have to deal with that threat before you can go back into Star Dreamer again. Uh, so here, I've doubled the time, or is it ten times? Ten times the speed? I think it is. It's uh, that's ten times. That's a hundred times, a thousand times, etc. So as you can see, not really making much progress here still 8.4 AU away from the station so what we're going to have to do is speed things up significantly there we go so at the top star dreamer speed we can actually see some progress as we head towards uh, Birmingham world so here you go we've got the animal meat on board we'll dock with uh, and the uh, Boston base just let the uh, autopilot handle this. this is a, <laughs> a definite benefit over the original Elite. <laughs> Just use the autopilot and in we go. No fiddly docking procedure at all. So yeah, so we'll go in here, we'll sell the animal meat, hopefully for a profit. I can't remember exactly how much the animal, animal meat was we bought. Uh, there we go, the one ton that we bought is just under a hundred, doesn't it? So let's see what we can sell it for. In we go. So yeah, trading is not exactly uh, exciting, but it is the most reliable way to make money and it's pretty much your only option at the beginning of the game, along with becoming a courier. Speed this bit up a bit. All right, here we go. Lovely. Oh yeah. So this is the uh, copy protection of the game. Um, asking you for something at the manual. They've nicely incorporated it in the game. So it's, it seems like it's the police asking you if <laughs> if you've stolen your ship or not, uh, which we haven't. So there you go. Uh, right. No. Let's go to the stock market then. Let's see. Oh, look at that. A massive profit, almost double on animal meat, so that's nice. Shame we could only afford one ton. But there we go, we have significantly increased our amount of cash. Um, the other thing I want to show you is here the bulletin board. And this is where you interact with the people in each individual system. Uh, and they will, there will be a list of jobs basically for you to do uh, that you can take on board. Um, so it might be things like this, take a small package, uh, here we go, take a small package to the Luton 789-6 system, 
pay 150 credits and because that fee is so low you can pretty much you know it should be pretty straightforward will there be any problems no sorry I'm not going that way um, or you can look at no, it's stuff like this look passage for a group I remind you it's a group so you, you can actually take people here they want to go to Et, Eta Cassiopeia and that's quite a lot of money so that makes you think oh there you go look he's a, he's a rich executive from the Sirius Corporation excuse me so you can almost guarantee that someone from a rival corporation will try and assassinate him as you uh, as you take him there so that will probably end up in a in a bus stop at some point uh, so these seemingly innocent ads here goods bought and sold at Hengs and Sunink highest prices paid for items interesting or otherwise by interesting they mean illegal so here you go well th these are illegal goods that you can buy and sell in these places now you can make huge profits from selling it, buying and selling these but obviously you might end up attracting unwanted attention from the law uh, this guy's look straight out narcotics will pay loads so <laughs> it's not quite a secret that one I'm wondering if maybe that's the police uh, pretending to, to buy nar narcotics so that they can nick you that does happen in this game there you go there's like um, there's, there's uh, people who need jobs as well so if you buy a big ship you might need some crew to man it there you go. Uh, this is interesting as well. Federal military. You can do missions for those, and uh, if you're successful, you get promotions and and stuff like that. So that's quite cool. Uh, right, what should we do next? Should we do a bit more trading? So we really haven't got very much money. I'll tell you what I'll show you next. Actually, is we'll go to the shipyard. Now this is where you upgrade your ships and you can buy new ships uh, and repair the ship that you've got. So let's have a look. Now at the moment we're in systems that are very safe. We're in the middle of federal space. Very unlikely that we'll be attacked by pirates. Uh, as long as we don't take any dangerous jobs, we'll be absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is we can make some more space on our ship and make some money by deleting the things we and selling the things we don't need. So let's see. There's our pulse laser. We'll get rid of that for the time being. Uh, where are we? Shipyard upgrades. Oh, One megawatt pulse laser remove. There we go. And uh, we've got some uh, missiles here as well. So let's get rid of those. There we go. Now you can see we've got lots more cash to play with, and um, we've got a bit more cargo space too. Uh, but we are defenceless, so you know we will have to stay within federal space and make sure we don't take on any dangerous jobs. Let me just have a check of the bulletin board. Uh, make sure there's nothing in the local area. Arcturus is close, but when you go to Arcturus, you do tend to get attacked by pirates, so I won't be taking that package. That's for a group. Now, if you're going to take a group, you need to have lots of um, passenger passenger cabins here, look, and we have none of those, and we don't have space or money to buy them, so we won't be taking people either. Oh, actually, I should show you this. This is interesting. Retirement for 17,500 credits. We wish to encourage Governor Molotov in the Leuton 789 6 system to stop work permanently. In other words, they want you to go and kill this guy. Now, you see, because I've just started the game, I have an elite rating of harmless or something like that. Thanks for contacting us, but we want someone with a higher elite Federation combat rating. Hmm. Why do you need combat rating to persuade someone to retire? Mm, dodgy. Let's see. Uh, elite rating, yes, harmless. And you can see it lists your rank here. So if you do those military jobs, you can do them for the Federation and for the Imperials. Uh, and earn ranks there. And it also shows your criminal record and all sorts. Very cool. Right, so what are we doing then? We are going to do some more trading. So, Barnard Star, let's see what their experts exports are. Here we go, major exports. Synthetic meat, fertilizer, plastics, alloys, industrial parts, computers, farm machinery, robots. Okay. 
And let's see, you know, let's go to Sov. Let's go home, shall we? Let's have a little look. As you can see, it's a very busy, very busy place. Lots of huge orbital cities. Uh, Mars has actually been terraformed. So there's lots of cities with people living on there. Io has got a little orbital, st orbital station, and so has Titan. Uh, yeah, so lots of lots of action. Let's see what what do they need? Major imports: computers and farm machinery. So we should buy computers and farm machinery. Right, let's go back to the bullet, uh, stock market. Let's see, can we actually afford them? That's the question. Computers, we can afford them. Fantastic. I'm going to buy computers. As much, oh, actually, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to make sure we have hydrogen fuel, otherwise we won't be able to make the hyperspace jump. Where's the hydrogen fuel? Have I missed it? There it is. Right, we'll buy that. We only need a ton because we've got a very small ship. And how many computers? Oh, we can only afford a few computers. Let's fill up the rest of the bay with farm machinery. Fantastic. Right, uh, let's ask for a launch request. This is slightly different because we're not on a planet. Uh, it will automatically take us out into space. Now the timing of me buying this game couldn't have been any better really. Uh, this came at a uh, uh, time... I can't remember. How old would I have been? I don't know, it's kind of about 13, 14 maybe. Um, and I was just getting into science fiction, reading a lot of Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov, that kind of thing. And uh, this game came boxed with a, uh, a, a little book with short stories in, which I absolutely devoured. Um, and so this all kind of fed into my imagination. And this game just, you know, it's a breeding ground for that, that imagination. Right, so let's see. So you know the book is full of like you know stories of traders going to far flung worlds and having adventures and getting into scrapes and stuff. So even though there's none of that really going on in this game, well not too much of it. It's all very uh, basic when you really think about it. My imagination was filling in the rest, and um, yeah, I always go to Mars High for some reason when I'm in the solar system. It's quite exciting for some reason. Okay, so yeah. Autopilot, off we go. I need a little. Where's our hyperspace cloud? I don't know, it's gone. Let's have a nicer view, shall we? Uh, yeah, so my imagination's kind of filling in the blanks all the time during this game, and you know, that just really, really made the game so much more special. Right, so we'll head to Mars and Mars High, uh, and we'll see if we can flog these computers and farm machinery for oh, for extra crash. Right. Now it's always worth checking the bulletin board because, for this very reason, sometimes when things are in high demand, the major imports um, become unavailable, and people will pay double what they're actually worth um, in order to get their hands on them. So, I'm Francis Gupta, I need computers urgently and I'll pay twice the market price. Fantastic. So all of a sudden we've got loads of money. Brilliant. Uh, let's just check nobody wants to buy farm machinery before we sell that. Okay, there we go. So, Let's go to the stock market and sell our fine machinery. Here we go, sell. So as you can see, we've already um, made an absolute ton of money. I and mean, we started with 100 credits. We now have 2,457 credits. So basically, if we were going to be a trader, we'd just keep doing this. Going back between the systems, finding profitable trade routes, um, if we're in dangerous systems, we'd obviously need to armor our ship. But that's probably not the most exciting way to play the game. 
it's far more exciting to upgrade your ship with lasers and things and then go off and either do the uh, the army missions the naval missions I should say or become a pirate because um, you can get what we're looking at uh, this fuel scoop here you can attach a fuel scoop to your ship which would normally be used to scoop up fuel from gas giants and stars but you can then buy this cargo scoop conversion which you could then use to scoop up anything with your fuel scoop and stick it in your in your cargo hold so you can actually blow up ships and steal their, uh, their the stuff which is really cool right how much money have we got have we actually got enough money to do something decent no is the answer I do I do know what I want to show you at this point though I want to show you the ships you can buy now Sol is a good place to go if you're upgrading your ship or if you're um, buying a new ship because they've got a lot of the best stuff because it's a really you know commercial place let's see so you look you know you can see the kind of money that you're expecting to uh, to pay to upgrade your ship and to be honest we've made so much money in such a short amount of time it wouldn't actually be long until we could buy something like an adder now as a trader you know this kind of thing is really good you know because there's so much more internal capacity now the drive does take up some of that space I'm not sure how heavy a class 2 hyperdrive is but that would still leave us with lots more than seven uh, you know more than double I would imagine so you're instantly doubling your profit margins there uh, and obviously uh, this is the way I first played the game as a trader uh, you know you trade your way up you buy your adder you've got more space you can buy more and sell more you make more money until you work your way up you work your way up and you start getting the really huge ships uh, like the Tiger Trader for example which has got hundreds of tons and before you know it, you're a millionaire. Uh, and there's a ship in the game called the uh, Panther Clipper, which is, uh, you know, it's the, the biggest ship, it's the most expensive ship, um, and has oodles of space. But there you go. I'm not going to show you too much more of that. Um, if you are interested in finding out more, obviously you could play it, or you could check out um, uh, Jim Plays Games, got an absolutely fantastic playthrough of this on his channel which I'll link to it down below um, so definitely check that out um, yeah so this is my third favorite Atari ST game of all time uh, David Braben's Elite 2 Frontier thank you very much for watching and take care <laughs>